it's Morgan again and welcome back. So in this video, as promised, I'm going to be talking about feeding cues. Now, feeding cues are baby's body language to tell mom that it's ready to eat. Now in feeding cues, we break feeding cues up into three different categories, early, mid, and late feeding cues. But I'm gonna use terminology that you can use with your patients to help explain a little bit better of what early, mid, and late actually is. So from the beginning, early, early feeding cues. I like to call early feeding cues the instinctual feeding cues. Now these are the feeding cues that the baby gives when the eyes are closed. And it's just starting to move its mouth to the side, lick its lips, bring its hands to its mouth, these types of first signals that the baby is hungry. Now these signals might not be continuous. And so the parents might think of, oh, the baby will be up soon, or she's just starting to get hungry, um, or she's um, thinking about food or dreaming, or she does that all the time, things like that. But I like to call them the instinctual. There's something within the baby that from an instinctual level is driving those motions. And the baby's eyes are even closed, so it's not even thinking about the food. It's it's mostly asleep. So, but there's still some biological component that's driving the baby to make those motions. Early feeding cues are the best time to latch a newborn on uh, in those first few days of life because it is more patient. It is instinctually driven and the baby's not wondering and actually actively searching for the food and things like that. So babies are more likely to be more patient at the breast. If it's a bad latch, mom can break the latch, try again. And then when baby's satisfied, they're more likely to go back to sleep. Now I'm gonna list a difficulty that can be found in each of these levels of feeding cues, but then I'm gonna circle back and go over the easy way to address all three of those difficulties. So the difficulty with early feeding cues is that baby can fall asleep at the breast. Because I mentioned in the previous video that this area is home, baby's comforted, warm, feels safe, baby can then latch on, go mwah, mwah, and fall back asleep because it's so comforting. Okay, so that's the difficulty with early feeding cues is sometimes maybe you can be a little bit sleepy and not want to actively do as much at the breast. Okay, that's early feeding cues. Mid feeding cues. Mid feeding cues, the eyes can be open or closed, but it is more of the continual signs. Baby's constantly sucking on hands or uh, turning and actively looking. Anybody can look at this baby and go, ooh, this baby's hungry. And that's exactly what I like to call it, those are the hungry feeding cues, that there's no mistaking that baby's not thinking about food, baby wants to eat. Now, when the milk supply comes in for mom, mid feeding cues or hungry feeding cues are not a big deal because baby gets put to breast, mom's milk lets down and baby gets food, awesome. In these first few days, mid feeding cues can be very frustrating to baby because baby is hungry and mom still just has those drops of colostrum. Mm, pardon me. The drops of colostrum <clears throat> help with the sleepy baby in early feeding cues because baby doesn't need to get but a few drops and can go back to sleep and is very satisfied. Works very well for early feeding cues, having this dense colostrum. In mid feeding cues, the baby's like, wait a minute, I want more. You're holding out. Now, I like to say that colostrum is very, very dense in nutrition, but very small in amount. So it's sort of like being absolutely starving and somebody handing you a very delicious salad. <laughs> you can imagine now that you're going to be going back for seconds. You're going to be hungry more often and things like that whenever you're just getting nutrition, but not sustainability, not volume. Okay. Now mom's body works in a supply and demand cycle. Stimulation to breast increases hormones. Those hormones tell the breast how much milk to make. Now mom creates that super dense colostrum at first so that in that sleepy period, baby can get all the nutrition it needs in a very small amount. Baby can go back to sleep, mom can go back to sleep, and they can both recover after delivery. That's why there's that first 24 hour sleepy period. Second 24 hours when the baby's light bulb goes on and wants bigger volumes, how does mom's body know that baby's ready for bigger volumes? There has to be some sort of trigger. That trigger is cluster feeding. That cluster feeding spikes mom's hormones, knocks on the part of the brain that tells the body, 
baby's ready for higher volumes. And that is why between day three and day five, the mom's milk supply comes in and she gets that larger volumes. So the more baby's allowed to do that, the sooner and fuller her milk supply comes in. But in mid feeding cues, when she just has colostrum, that baby can get very antsy and do what I like to call bobbing for boobs. It's where baby goes on, suckles a few times, pulls itself off, goes, I must be in the wrong place, let me go somewhere else, and does this on and off, on and off, on and off type of thing and won't settle and is fighting a little bit more and can get a little bit more frustrated at the breast. So that's the difficulty with mid feeding cues. Late feeding cues, you can probably guess that is your crying, screaming, thrashing. That has gone past instinct, past hunger, and now that little one's stomach hurts. It's feeling hunger pains. And now this baby has never felt anything like hunger before. It's always been inside of mom, stomach full of amniotic fluid, doesn't know what it is. So it kind of goes into panic mode that my its stomach feels this way. And when its stomach feels that way, they don't latch, they don't eat, they wanna, don't wanna do anything to do with the breast because they have no idea that their mouth is connected to their stomach. So be, the, the saying with late feeding cues is calm me then feed me because a fussy and crying baby is not going to latch onto the breast at all. We need to calm that pain, skin to skin, shh noises, and uh, also some hand expression. Hand expression is your go-to fix it for the problems in all three of these levels. Early feeding cues, when the baby is sleepy, you can do hand expression right to the baby's mouth. It's kind of like enticement, kind of like you're so exhausted but you smell somebody next door making bacon and eggs and you're like, I'm exhausted but that smells so freaking good, I can't sleep while smelling this until I go eat. It can help a baby wake up to eat some and then go back to sleep. If not, if it's still like going, go away, but mom wants to feed the baby, mom can always do some hand expression right to the baby's mouth or hand express to a spoon and give baby that one swallow. That way she maintains her stimulation as well as she knows even though baby's sleepy, baby got a little bit of intake and we're good, okay? Mid feeding cues, that hand expression, exactly the same. Hand expression directly to the baby's mouth. When the baby's looking and hungry and hungry, it can go, ooh, there's something here. And baby's more likely to stay on and stay attentive when it tastes that milk when it latches on. Now, after it sucks a few times, it might come off because that droplet is gone. Mom just hand expresses again, gets that baby on. One or two things are gonna happen. Either one, that baby's gonna be on long enough to raise mom's hormones to have some sort of supply start flowing a little bit easier and he'll be more likely to stay on. Or two, mom's done enough hand expression drop by drop to that baby's mouth to again calm some of that hunger so baby stays on the breast and is more calm and stays on latched a little bit longer. Now late feeding cues, the crying, screaming, fussing baby, the hunger pains. Mom can still try to do the enticement to try and get baby to calm down but more likely she's going to have to get a spoon and do some hand expression and give baby a swallow or two of that expressed milk to help baby calm down, put baby skin to skin, do a little bit more expression, calm that hunger pain and then you'll start to see the feeding cues return. As soon as the feeding cues return by doing that hand expression, she's already raised her hormones, the flow has increased. When you get baby on, he'll be more likely to stay on and finish his feed and he'll probably do a really long feed at that and I would always suggest following up that feed with even more hand expression because by doing that crying and screaming babies burn some calories and probably fell asleep before all of those calories have been met so if you give a little bit extra um, supplement after the feed is done that that will lower those feeding cues and you can start fresh with early feeding cues during that next time also very important to emphasize that skin to skin. That way those early feeding cues are recognized as soon as they happen. Babies are more likely to go into late feeding cues when that um, baby is kept in a bassinet and things like that and then you're having to fight to get that feed in. So that's just a broad picture of those three levels of feeding cues that so early, a sleepy baby, mid feeding cues, a bit more frustrated, late feeding cues, baby's not gonna latch. But the good thing is that it is the same solution for all three of those levels and that is the glory of the hands. Give some hand expression, get mom's milk supply stimulated and going in, get some milk into that baby to calm those feeding cues and all roads lead back to the breast. Hope that helps and I'll see you around.